Hi everyone, I'm Brandon Grizzly. I'm a high school computer science teacher. Last time we were using libgdx to start a game, and I'm just going to show you what we got to. Here is a scrolling background on a game. We're supposed to have a kind of a portrait mode. Um, today I'm going to show you how to have multiple layers in this background to give that parallax effect where things that are far away are looking like they move slower and things closer to the camera move faster. Um, before we do that, I think I want to go and fix here in the desktop launcher the um, size of, of the screen. It's, when I play it, it's showing up as something pretty large and not the shape that I want. So to do that, the config, you can just set the height of it and the width of it directly. I'm going to set the height to 640 and the config width I will set to 360. That's the right aspect ratio. So now when I play that, I get something that kind of fits on my computer screen. Okay, let's close that. And we won't need this anymore. Let's head back over to our game screen. Now, what we did last time, we made a camera and a viewport. We started working on some graphics. We used this offset to make a background and all of that happened down here in the render method. So we're going to make some changes here. This won't be the last time we change this, but I'm just kind of moving in small phases here. We're going to improve this background here. I'm going to get rid of this line. I'm just going to comment that out with control slash on my keyboard for now so you can see what I've done. And instead of having a single background, we're going to have a, an array of textures, which I will call backgrounds. And this will contain multiple layers, each of which we sort of paint on the screen one after the other. And then instead of this offset, we're going to have an array of offsets. And instead of ints, I'm going to use floats because it's going to make it easier when we uh, are using the timing um, for the render method. So I'm going to call them background offsets because I have more than one. And rather than just putting a semicolon here, I'm going to make a new array. If you've never done this before, you can put um, these literal starting values in for an array by putting them inside of these braces. So this makes an array of size 4 with 0 in every spot. With floats they really would be zeros anyway without doing this, but you can do this right here when you are declaring a new array as a field variable. So that's what we're going to use. Um, one more thing that we'll need is we need a number that tells us how fast the fastest part is going. They're going to move at different speeds. So I'm going to make a variable called background max scrolling speed. Yes, that's a really long um, name for that. And we're going to initialize that in a minute. So we got rid of this variable. We got rid of this variable and we've added in a few more. And that's it for up here. Now this part needs to go away. Comment that out. And instead, we're going to initialize each of the background images. Now right now in the Android part of the project, assets, we have just this one PNG file. So we're going to need to do better than that. Instead of this one PNG, I'm going to make four PNGs. I'm going to copy those over here. Now let me go back to Android Studio and show you what these look like. Each one of these is a, um, a starscape. There's a little red line at the top. I put this in just to show you where the edge is. I have a version that doesn't have the red line. Here's number one. Same thing, there's a tiny red line there as well. And you can't really see it now on my screen, but there are a whole bunch of stars there and transparency. That way these can layer on top of one another and you'll be able to see all the ones underneath. So let's build these up now. Um, we need to go backgrounds at the first position, or at position zero is going to be a new texture. We're using the same strategy as before. And this is going to be called Starscape 00. I'm using 0 oops, instead of 1 as my first layer, because that's how we typically talk about things with arrays. Uh, OK, let's just copy and paste that a few times and change all of these numbers. 1, 2, 3 instead. One, two, three. Okay, so I have an array with four textures now, like four images. Um, the only thing left to do is set up that scrolling speed. So background max scrolling speed is going to be, well, I would like it to be 
um, maybe like four seconds to go through the whole screen for a star, the fastest star to go through the whole screen. So I'm going to use the world height and divide that by four. We're going to get a little warning here because, let me just bring that up, that's integer division, but we're putting it into a floating point number. Now, world height divided by four is fine because our height is 128, which does divide nicely, but we can cast it to a floating point number first before we do the division. And then the division happens and we get a floating point answer. So for example, if your world height was a different kind of number like 75, then dividing by four here will give us a decimal answer instead of an integer answer. It's not that big a deal, but casting to a float is fine here. And we only do it once. Now this part is all going to change. So I'm gonna get rid of all of the code that we wrote before. We're gonna rewrite something really similar in just a moment. So you have a choice to make. The render method can get very, very large, have many, many pieces to it. And one option we have is to write private methods like little subprograms that get called here, here, here. And those each will run in sequence. And we can write the code elsewhere in our file. And I'm gonna do that now. It's a good idea for keeping yourself organized. It's, it really doesn't cost that much in terms of runtime, so it's worth doing. So I'm gonna make a new method called render background, and I will give it the delta time. That is how much time has passed since the last time the render method was called. Now that's it. That method is gonna to have to be written down here. We begin the batch, we render the background, and we end the batch and show it on the screen. So let's write that private void method, render background, and it needs to take a floating point number, which is the time that has passed um, since the last time the background was rendered. To do this, we're going to use the new list of background offsets, which we started creating up here. They're currently at zero. And each of those needs to be updated according to how much time has passed. So we'll do it like this, background offsets, the, the first one, zero, will become equal to, we're gonna add onto it, so we can use the plus equals operator, that takes the old value and adds onto it. We'll take the delta time and multiply by that background scrolling speed. That's the maximum speed though, and I want the background layer, the lowest layer, the one furthest away, to be a lot slower. So I'm gonna take that number and divide it by eight. So it's one eighth of the maximum speed. Let's copy and paste that. And for layers one, two, and three, so the second, third, and fourth layers, instead of dividing by eight, I'm gonna divide by four, so that'll be faster, not divided by as much. And for the next layer, divide by two. And for the final layer, I don't need to divide by one, I can just leave it at the maximum scrolling speed. So those are the offsets. Now, if you remember from last time, that's how far down we're gonna push the, um, that layer. So that number will tell us how far down to push the furthest away layer down on the screen. And then we basically print two copies of the background, one at that offset and one above it um, so that it fills in the whole screen. We're gonna use a for loop for it. I'm gonna make an int. I'll call it layer instead of something like i because then it's easier to understand. As long as the layer number is less than, well, the number of layers here is four, um, but I think I'll use the variable for the length of the array. That way, if I decide to add more layers, I don't need to change this code too. And we'll add one to the layer number each time. So in here, we have two things to do. Number one, I need to make sure we haven't scrolled too far off the edge of the screen and uh, need to adjust the background offset. We don't want to print something so far down that you can't see it. So we're going to need an if statement that says if the background offset of the current layer is more than the height of the world, that would push it so far that you wouldn't even see that layer being printed. If that happens, we want to reset it To be exactly zero. So once it gets too big, we start over again and we, we repeat from before. This is a slight change from what we did last time. Last time we added one to the background offset every time, like one um, meter or whatever in our world. 
Uh, now we are using this the delta time to decide how long to take. Um, so we, we just have a slightly different uh, approach here. Now we give the command to actually draw this layer. Remember, we're starting on layer zero, which is the one furthest from the camera. And we use batch.draw. We want the actual layer, so backgrounds at the current layer number, which will start at zero. And then we have to give it the location. The X location is zero. The Y location is, we're gonna subtract the background offset for the current layer. I'm just going to press enter so you can see all this. Um, then we need the width and the height. Well, the world width is the width, and the world height is the height. And that will print off uh, the, the lower of the two copies. Let's copy that. And we're going to do exactly the same thing, but the Y starting value is going to be the same, but we're going to add on the world height. OK, let me just press enter here again to make that a little easier to see. So X and Y, uh, there. Okay, I think that's pretty easy to see. So we print off this texture at zero, we back it up a little bit. We do the same texture at zero and back it up, but then also increase it or slide it up by the world height. Okay, so this loop will run, starting here, ending there for layers 0, 1, 2, 3. So it'll print the furthest away layer first, and then the next one, and the next one, and so on, until all of the layers are printed. They're going to move at different speeds because of this difference in how the, the offsets are determined. So they're not moving at the same speed. Let's press play and try it out. Oops, I have a null pointer exception on game screen 39. Let's click and see. Oh, that's where I tried to use the array of textures, but I hadn't created the array of textures yet. So let's just fix that. Backgrounds becomes equal to a new texture array of size 4. Sorry about that. Let's try again. OK, so here we have, you can see the red line now separating each texture. The one that's moving fastest is closest to the, to the camera, closest to us. And then the next one that's a little bit slower right here shows the division between those two copies of that starscape. So each starscape has its own uh, little bits of stars going by, and there are two copies being displayed every time. So there are really eight images there, and the red lines are separating each of them. So the red lines are just so you can see how the speeds are different. This slowest one here is the furthest away layer, the background layer, which is the, the actual purple one. OK, I'm going to stop that. Let's go and make it look better by using the right assets. So these ones have a line in them, but these ones do not. I'll copy those over there, replacing the original four files. Now when I press play, those lines won't be there. And there, we've got our stars flying past at different rates. And if you look closely, you can see which ones are moving slowest and a little bit faster and so on. Okay, so that's how we do a parallax background with different layers moving at different speeds. I hope that's helpful. If you have any questions, of course, you can ask in the comments and I'll be happy to help you out. Thanks.